So if you're dealing with things like that, you might not want to play the dangerous game of letting them completely. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having a fantastic day. It is Thursday, June 20th here in South Georgia. And on today's video, we're going to spend a little time in the tomato patch, show you some of the few indeterminate plants we have left after the crazy weather we've been experiencing the last week or two, show you our determinate tomatoes that are actually hanging in there pretty well, and then we're going to walk around to some of the other plots, show you some of the damage that we incurred during the storms. So although we started out with two full rows of indeterminate plants here, as you can see, we're down to just a few. But before we take a closer look at those, let me kind of set the stage a little bit as far as what's been going on around here. So today is Tuesday, like I said earlier, and we try to shoot these videos a week in advance. I know that drives some people crazy, but between the time it takes to plan a video, shoot a video, edit, make a thumbnail, upload, all that, there's usually, say, five to eight hours that goes in to each video we make. So you can't really make these things the day of or the day before and we like to kind of stay ahead of schedule so if we get a week of crazy weather we're still getting out videos every Monday Wednesday and Friday so last week a lot of rain saw some hail for the first time in my adult life I'm 37 years old I know that's crazy that I've never seen hail but we got some pretty nasty hail around here I'll try to throw a picture on the screen here a lot of it was bigger than golf ball, almost tennis ball size, and it came down in a hurry, a lot of it. That obviously did some significant damage to some of the plants in the garden, which I'll show you in a minute. We did certainly need the rain, not quite as much rain though as we've been getting. So a couple weeks ago, before the weather got crazy, we did a video showing you how some of these indeterminate tomatoes were just struggling, probably weren't going to make it, and kind of contrasted those with those determinants over there that are kicking, looking nice and green and healthy. So we had a few plants a couple weeks ago that were on the way out and when the hailstorm came all the winds came that kind of wrapped up a few more and we're probably down to less than half of what we started with here and got a few plants here that look like they may not make it but just a few more days so this is our plot map that we started with on these two rows of indeterminate tomatoes and we just keep crossing them off as we lose one here and there you can see we still got a few remaining so let's go over these few that are still standing here so we still have both of our black beauty tomato plants here and they look relatively decent they are not caring much for 91 degrees out here this afternoon they look a little stressed but considering what they've had to deal with, they're doing okay. I was able to sample one of these yesterday. I had one down there that was starting to turn a little bit red on the bottom. One half of it was kind of boogered up. Wasn't going to make it in the kitchen. So I just kind of caveman half of it. And it was pretty dang tasty. And we still have both of our chocolate stripey plants here. And these seem to be pretty dang productive. I had one of these yesterday. Really, really tasty. So they're hanging in there like the Black Beauties are. But next to those, we've got a couple here that are really struggling. So this is a variety called Copia. And I don't know that we're going to get any tomatoes off these plants. They look like they're on the way out. Maybe there's one down there that I should go ahead and grab and let it ripen inside. But I don't think these plants are going to do much more. Probably going to cut the cord on those later this week. And moving along here, you can see a couple skips where we've had to remove some plants. Now these two plants here in the frame are what I'm calling the big Wisconsin variety sent to us by David in Wisconsin. These are supposed to make some pretty big maters. Fruit size looks pretty decent so far. Getting some bug pressure on these. You can see a little leaf-footed bug on that fruit right there. It's been too wet to spray the last week and a half, so we're just having to kind of deal with the bug pressure. That plant looks okay. This plant here actually looks pretty dang good, and we've got a nice little cluster of fruit down there. So I'm hoping this puppy here makes it long enough to get a real big Wisconsin tomato. And then lastly on this row, we've got one long Turkey Creek mater plant left. And this one actually looks 
pretty decent and we've got a nice cluster of some big fruits right there i'm hoping those make it because i can't wait to try some more of these and then on the second row we've got three plants left but really only one of those looks decent that's this amana plant right here we had two of these but only one is still standing starting to get some nice fruits forming on those i had a smaller one at the bottom it was quite tasty this next one here is vintage wine have had a few tomatoes off this plant but it looks like it's on the way out maybe able to salvage a few of those fruits at the bottom there and then lastly here we have the dolly pardon tomato and i think it's about toast maybe we can save that one right there now for some of those plants we lost i didn't get to try a single tomato from some of those varieties but there were a few that i did get to try before we cut the plants and took down the string so the italian heirloom tomato that mark over in colorado sent us i did get to try a couple of those those were really really good i wish the plants would have made it longer but at least we got to try one or two of them Here's a couple of those vintage wine tomatoes. I showed you that one plant that looks like it's kind of on the way out. I've probably been able to eat more of these than I have any of the other indeterminate varieties so far. Salvaged these yesterday. Not real big, but they are mighty, mighty tasty. So I'm about due for a snack anyway, so we'll cut one of these open here, show you the inside. It's a nice kind of dark, smoky inside. Mm really really good flavor you about don't need any salt and pepper on that right there had some of these or had one of these with some eggs and taters last night really really good i could eat those out here all day long i would highly recommend this variety if you're better at growing indeterminates than i am and now over here to the determinants which are the tomatoes that i can actually grow worth the flip so we've got a row of roadster here and then that tall row over there is our favorite the red snapper so all the wind in the hail didn't take down our florida weave trellis but as you can see it compromised it a little bit plants are still standing though there's some more of those dang leaf footed bugs right there I need to spray this afternoon, but it's supposed to rain again all day tomorrow, so I'd just be wasting it if I did it this afternoon. Got a few tomatoes in here. They got tore up by the hail and have since just kind of rotted on the plant. You can see that one right there. It got hit pretty hard with a big piece of hail. I've removed several that look like that, but I wanted to leave that one to show you some of the damage. Now our red snappers here, for whatever reason, didn't take near as much hail or wind damage as Roadster did. In addition to being disease resistant, it appears that these are also storm resistant. We do have lots of lines of string there in that Florida weave trellis to keep these puppies upright. I had to remove a few tomatoes here that had some hail damage, but we're still loaded up here with tomatoes everywhere. We're gonna have a good harvest if this weather can calm down a little bit. Now I know you'll hear a lot of people say you gotta let your tomatoes ripen all the way on the vine. That's the way to get the best flavor out of your tomatoes. But sometimes you just gotta roll with the punches. If you're getting a lot of rain, if you're getting a lot of wind, if you can't spray because it's too wet outside, then you might need to go ahead and pick those tomatoes before they ripen on the vines. So let me give you an example here with a couple of these nice red snappers. So this is a big softball size red snapper tomato that I picked yesterday and it has turned a good bit since yesterday afternoon. It was just barely blushing or turning when I picked it yesterday. This is one that I picked about three or four days ago and it's been sitting on the counter inside and it's almost ready to eat. It needs to darken up a little bit there. You can see the difference just a few days makes. Now I've never really been an everyday mater picker. I don't come out here every day, go up and down the rows, 
find the ones that are just right and take them inside. Instead, what I usually do is pick mine, say every four days or so, and I'll get anything that has turned. So if it's the least bit pink, it gets picked. That means in my bucket, when I'm done, I'll have some that look like this, I'll have some that look like this, and I might even have a few that are perfectly ripe. So I'll take those inside, have them on the counter, that way as they ripen, I can enjoy them there. That ensures that these pretty tomatoes right here don't get eaten by worms, don't get a lot of stings on them from the leaf-footed bugs, don't get broken off by the wind. So if you're dealing with things like that, you might not want to play the dangerous game of letting them completely ripen on the vine. I promise you, they'll still taste really, really good if you let them ripen inside. So we've taken some bumps and bruises, especially with those indeterminate plants, but our determinate tomatoes are still loaded with a bunch of nice looking fruits. So I think we'll be all right. Now let's walk around. Let me show you some of the other damage caused by all the storms. So our peppers here fared pretty well. I don't think we lost any plants. Some of that hail did hit the string on our Florida weave trellis caused it to sag a little bit. Never seen that happen. But the plants are still loaded up with fruits and this particular variety here this altiplano serrano i would highly highly recommend this variety we've been eating a lot of these these are really good and get pretty good size for serrano and in the same plot where we have our second planting of summer squash these plants took a beating but most of them have recovered this one right here i think it got hit square dead center with a big piece of hail i don't know that it's going to recover probably need to pull that one but the rest of these have made quite the comeback and our dwarf cowhorn oak tree plants here got pelted pretty good got some nice holes in those leaves got a nice little lean to them there but i think they're going to be all right and over here in the watermelon plot, our untimely planting, because we were waiting on our onions to get done, actually worked out pretty well. Thank goodness we didn't have any ripe or close to ripe fruits out here. Otherwise, we'd have probably been squalling after that hail put a dent in all of them. So fortunate for us, we planted these late and it worked out for us this year. I think we do have some tiny little fruits out there plants still look healthy and I think these are going to be just fine. So those two plots fared pretty well considering the wind we were having and the size hail we got. But over here in this raised bed plot, it's a little bit of a different story. So over here we've got quite a few plants that are leaning and then we've got some things that are completely down. So these two cucumber trellises fell down when we had all the winds and hail. I stood them back up. They fell down again a couple days later with more wind, stood them back up, and now they're down again. So I'm about tired of standing these things back up. I do think I can salvage these trellises here, but I'm going to have to do a little rigging, a little work on them, and I don't think I'm going to be able to do that and leave the plants intact there. Now, for these pickles over here, this Excelsior variety, we've harvested a good many of these. So if I lose these, not a big deal, not gonna hurt my feelings a whole lot. But this Corinto bed right here was just starting to produce well. So that's gonna hurt a little bit. Still got time to plant one more round of cucumbers. So I think we're just gonna scrap these and start over somewhere else. And because of all that wind, our poor kale trees right here have started to lean pretty significantly. Didn't blow any of them over, but they're not standing pretty and upright like they once were. And these tomato cages haven't completely fallen over, but they've been leaning pretty bad several times. I've stood them back up several times. The plants still look okay there. Not a whole lot of damage on the plants. Got a bunch of those pretty Torangina tomatoes that we need to harvest later this afternoon. And the same thing with these Edox cherry tomatoes here and those Dixie red tomatoes back there. These cages get blown over a little bit. We stand them back up. Looks like we've got a few of those rascals in there that we need to try. That's the first ripe ones I've noticed on this plant. Our Dixie red plants are looking really, really good. Thank goodness they didn't fall over. They're loading up nicely with tomatoes. Maybe got some hail damage on one of those there but hoping to get some good fruits off those. Over here on the back half of the property are two giant sunflower plants that we had left. 
are somehow still standing. Good thing we got them running through that arch trellis there. That definitely helped. Those puppies are on up about 10 foot tall or so now and still growing. And it may be hard to tell now because they've been growing so fast with all this moisture in the ground, but our squash and pumpkins took a pretty good beat down from the wind and the hail, especially this giant butternut plant here. So we've got one fruit on here that we were hoping to grow to giant size. We've been pruning off all the other fruits and flowers, letting the plant devote all its energy to this puppy here. And it was growing really, really fast. I think it's still growing. You can see some nice little dings in it from the hail there. Also kind of ruptured the stem a little bit there. So I don't know if we're gonna get to giant size on this one or not. I don't know if we've got time enough to let another fruit develop and get monster size. Still got some hope for this plant over here as far as growing a giant. Over here behind the barn, you can see our greenhouse took some damage. It's got a few holes in it up there i think i can patch those with some tape that they gave me when i bought the greenhouse but probably gonna have to replace that top plastic there a little sooner than i wanted to and over here in the fig orchard we didn't get as much damage as i thought we would have gotten i was expecting to come out here and see all my figs on the ground but that wasn't the case i actually harvested a good many figs yesterday we did get some figs that got tore up pretty good by the hail though so I harvested a nice little small bucket of these Canadria figs yesterday, but we can see a few here that got skin up pretty bad by the hail. There's one right there. There's another one or two right there with some skin marks on them. Some of these I've still been able to eat. They're not completely ruined, but some of them like that one just need to be pulled off and thrown in the woods. And of all these 40 or so new trees that I just planted within the last month or two, thankfully, I only lost one of them. So this LSU red tree did look like that one right there. But after the storm, it was completely broken off at the soil there. And when I found that little tree broken, it wasn't in that bad a shape. The leaves hadn't wilted yet and still looked pretty good. What I could have probably done was scratched up the bottom of it with my knife, dipped it in rooting hormone, put it in a pot in the greenhouse and got it to re-root. But I really wasn't in the right mind frame for all that after that crazy storm. So instead, all I did was just stick it in the ground thinking, well, maybe it'll root right there in the ground. If it doesn't, I do have a replacement tree in the greenhouse, so no worries there. So it's been a doozy here the last week and a half, and it looks like it's gonna continue being a doozy as we're forecasted to get rain all day tomorrow and more rain later in the week. But anyways, hope you enjoyed the video today. Don't forget to check out our affiliate links in the description below and go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com. And in case you missed our bountiful tater harvest before all the weather got wacky, you can see that right here. We'll talk about all the varieties we grew this year, our return on investment for each variety and tell you which varieties we like the best. So check that out and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.